Good evening, I'm Dennis Ward. Welcome to APTN National News. We begin with unfolding news on the East Coast. Just hours before the national leaders debate is set to start in Gatineau, Quebec this evening, National Chief Roseanne Archibald of the Assembly of First Nations was on the wharf at Solnerville, Nova Scotia today. It was to support Mi'kmaq Treaty, the Mi'kmaq Treaty right to gather lobsters. Archibald gave a press conference on the wharf where there have been violent clashes between treaty fishers and Department of Fisheries officials. Shortly after, a small boat left the wharf to fish lobster, but they were turned around by DFO officials. They set out again, and at that point, they were surrounded by DFO officials and Zodiacs. Archibald came out on the water in a second boat. The Sabag and Agony community released a statement saying the traps were pulled and lobster confiscated despite their proper tags. Our own Angel Moore is on that small boat and she will have a full report tomorrow. Well, Gatineau, Quebec, in unceded Algonquin territory, was the host of last night's French language leaders debate. Indigenous languages, the environment and water were among some of the topics debated. Here's Tom Fenario with some of the highlights. Le débat des chefs. At one point, the French language leaders debate had a kind of existential question. As in, why are we having this election debate at all? Dans un quatrième vague de la COVID-19, Monsieur Trudeau, c'était la mauvaise chose à faire de déclencher une élection quand on sait on est toujours des défis. Et particulièrement parce que la seule raison pour laquelle vous avez déclenché cette élection, c'est pour une raison égoïste, d'avoir plus de pouvoir. Liberal leader Justin Trudeau wasn't just forced to defend his decision to call a pandemic election. He also came under fire for his party's performance with regards to the climate change crisis. C'est à vous de décider pendant ces élections. Est-ce que vous voulez continuer sur le même chemin six ans de faillite? On voit ce soir tous les différents partis disent oui, on est sérieux sur l'environnement euh, parce qu'on est un pays de, de science et de respect pour la science. La réalité, c'est qu'il faut se fier aux experts. Et les experts, Exactement, les environnementalistes, les climatologues, euh, les, les économistes disent tous que c'est le Parti libéral qui a le seul ah, vrai vote. The two-hour debate included a section devoted to indigenous issues. Perry Simon of Ganasatage Mohawk Territory asked the leaders a question regarding reconciliation. Seriez-vous prêt à inclure les langues des Premières Nations? des Inuits, des Métis, parmi les langues officielles du Canada. Bloc québécois leader Yves-François Blanchet, the NDP's Yagmeet Singh, and Green leader Anami Paul all supported the idea. Trudeau sidestepped the question, choosing to instead emphasize actions his party has already undertaken. Mais nous avons pris, uh, difficilement, mais nous avons pris la décision de nommer une gouverneure générale qui euh, ne parle pas nos deux langues officielles parce qu'elle parle une de nos langues officielles et l'Inuktitut. Conservative leader Erin O'Toole also neglected to say if indigenous languages should be made official languages in Canada. Rather, he emphasized improving access to indigenous languages. Et il y a deux semaines, on a annoncé un investissement historique dans la santé mentale euh, des Autochtones pour les services dans les langues traditionnelles. Another topic of note, water. Trudeau again found himself on the defensive with regards to boil water advisories on First Nations. On en a éliminé 109. Il nous en reste uh, une couple douzaine, 50 à peu près. Trudeau recommitted to ending them, but the general consensus from the other leaders, not good enough. C'est une honte à l'échelle internationale. Il faut, au-delà des engagements électoraux, que tout le monde dise d'une même voix, on va voter pour que ce soit réglé maintenant à la satisfaction des communautés autochtones touchées. Tonight, the leaders will reconvene to do it all again in English, where Indigenous issues are once again expected to be on the table, with our own Melissa Ridgen asking the questions. Tom Fenario, APTN National News, Montreal. Well, as Tom mentioned, the English language debate is coming up tonight, and we will have live pre- and post-debate coverage of the event. That will also be available in a number of Indigenous languages, and we'll have more on that coming up later in the show. 
Well, the three northern territories are huge geographically, but they often have trouble being heard in the provinces. Our Ken Driscoll set out to find out what, if any, northern, anything northerners are hoping for in tonight's leadership debate. Nunavut, the this NWT, the and Yukon account for 40% of Canada's land mass, but the three combined are less than 1% of Canada's population. While each territory does have one MP seat, the territories can often feel left out when things are under a federal lens, like tonight's federal leaders' debate. But some of the listed topics of debate tonight relate to the territories. One of the topics? Affordability. A recent poll showed that voters in Toronto cited housing costs as their biggest issue. For once, Toronto and the territories are on the same page. Affordability is key. Uh, up here it's hard to afford, like rent and food, everything costs high. Hey, everything is overpriced and I feel that um, we are uh, charged too much for things that can be um, simple because we're the same country. Well, it's very important because up here it's everything so expensive. Maybe they should lay off on the taxes a bit. The territories are often called the canary in the coal mine of climate change. Climate change policy is on the agenda tonight. I think it's very important to um, hunt and uh, if the, um, uh, the winter seasons um, being reduced and the, the ice capacity is um, thinning out, I think it's very important. The weather's always different now, like every summer is different, winter's different. Because that's all we have, it's the climate. We don't have anything else, we can't move to Mars. Some of the debate will cover issues important to residents in all three territories, whether the candidates mention the territories by name or not. If they do, they will catch the attention of residents. After all, when you're less than 1% of the total population of the country, national recognition is always noticed. Ken Triscoll, ABTN National News, Halloween. It could be a tight race in one Edmonton riding in this federal election. APTN's Chris Stewart spoke to Métis NDP candidate Blake Desjardins as he talks to voters about issues important to them. This way, and meet. we'll just park here at 77. Blake Desjardins is gathered with his team, preparing to walk the streets and talk to voters in the edmonton Greasebog riding. The area north and east of downtown has 112,000 residents, with about 10% identifying as Indigenous. The polls say Desjardins has a chance to win. The polling site, 338canada.com, has Desjardins at 35% support in the polls, just three points behind two-term Conservative Kerry Diot. Diot has been the MP for the riding since 2015. The Liberals, led by Habiba Mohamed, trail at 20%. Desjardins says people he has talked to in his riding are mostly worried about the economy. I'd say poverty. It's, you know, we're at the doors all the time, you know, over 10 hours a day, every single day for months now, and we've heard from countless amount of people, whether it's single parents who are just trying to get by, trying to put food on the table and not sure how they're going to pay rent because the rent keeps going up, or maybe it's folks who are just trying to get into social housing. They're talking about wait lists as long as years, you know, five, eight years long. Desjardins says clean water is one top priority for him as too many reserves still have to boil their water. Another big issue is affordable housing. Social housing is something that is critical to ending poverty. So I believe that that is one of the major steps to actually making sure poverty is reduced in a fast and effective way, by making sure there's actually houses for families. Here in Edmonton, Griesbaugh, building social housing units that are going to put folks who are houseless into homes fast and immediately. He says the current federal government is fighting Indigenous people in court instead of supporting them, and that needs to stop. There's been a significant amount of court battles recently uh, with the Ministry of Justice defending on behalf of the Government of Canada that include things like children looking for relief from the federal government for their experiences in existing foster care homes or within the child and family services. We see elders of residential schools being fought in court uh, right now for compensation. And so not much has changed. Today, Dejale heard from voters. You must be Rebecca. Yes. Thanks so much for meeting with us today. 
My biggest concern right now is with the student debt yeah. because the way interest is going to work is we're not going to be able to afford anything in our future because we'll be too busy paying off all the debt. And the increase is just really worrying for us. Yeah, I sorry. really like Jagmeet Yes. I really do. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm impressed with what I've read so far of your platform, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, so that was thus why we decided to put up a sign. And then I noticed since we put up ours, somebody down there put up one too. Oh, you're spreading it. <laughs> <You're doing laughs> it's working. Eh? Yeah, like, an orange yeah. wave's happening. <laughs> Chris Stewart, APTN National News, Edmonton. The massive Kenora riding is also typically a tight race in any federal election. Candidates there are taking part in their own debate tonight. Here's APTN's Michelle Carlinzig on the scene. I'm here in the electoral riding of Kenora, Ontario, one of Canada's largest federal ridings geographically. It covers many First Nation communities from Kenora all the way through northwestern Ontario. The incumbent MP is Eric Melillo for the Conservative Party. This year, the NDPs have Jane Seymour running. She's an Indigenous lawyer from Sioux Lookout. Both Seymour and Melillo, along with the Liberal and Green Party candidates, will be here in Kenora tonight, participating in a local debate. It'll start before the federal leaders debate in English from Ottawa. I'll be here at the local debates to hear more about the concerns and issues that the people of Kenora and Northwestern Ontario care about most. You can tune in tomorrow at 5 to hear more. Michelle Karlenzig, APTN National News, Kenora. Live from Gatineau, the party leaders face off about Canada and its future. The federal leaders debate. Commercial free tonight. Welcome back. The Manitoba Métis Federation wants all Indigenous people to get out and vote in this year's federal election. And they're giving their citizens an incentive by offering a draw for a number of prizes if they vote. With more, here's Daryl Stranger. Manitoba Métis Federation citizens could find themselves driving a brand new car just for voting. Any MMF citizen who takes a picture outside of a polling station and tags the MMF will have their name put into a draw to win PlayStation 5 consoles or the grand prize, a brand new Chevy Spark. This competition uh, process and incentive process that we're putting in does not tell you how to vote, who to vote for, or any particular candidate. It actually says take a picture outside a polling station uh, and that you're going out to vote and look in the website and here's their answers to the 15 priorities and you choose who you believe would best serve your needs, your family's needs, your community's needs, or your nation's needs. Citizens who help bring others to polling stations will also be eligible to win one of five 50-inch flat-screen TVs. Chartrand said the MMF did not reach out to Elections Canada regarding the incentive. I did not uh, phone Elections Canada to tell me how to run my government or how to get the incentives uh, established, uh, and I don't think they have a role to play in that, in my view. Uh, elections Canada has got to make sure that I'm not in any way going out to, uh, if, if I'm using any type of uh, incentives, probably to choose one particular party or candidate. Uh, that definitely would probably be in question for Election Canada. But to get uh, democracy in place, to get our citizens out to vote, uh, Elections Canada should be supporting it. Elections Canada wouldn't say if they support the prize draws or if they don't, and whether or not it violates the Election Act. We can't comment on specific cases. It would be up to the Commissioner to determine if there was a violation of the Act or not, if they receive a complaint based on the particular facts at hand. The Commissioner's Office said they do not confirm or deny whether a complaint has been filed regarding a particular issue. If the issue falls within the Commissioner's jurisdiction, a review or investigation may be carried out to determine whether or not there was, in fact, wrongdoing under the Act. Chartrand added the money to pay for the prizes is not federal money and hopes the incentive gets young voters out. We're getting stronger now as Indigenous governments and we're having more flexibility to try to use other tools. Uh, they're using, for example, incentives to get vaccinations for, in this country in some other parts of the world. Uh, and, and some large quantities of money are being offered just to get a vaccine. So we're looking at that idea and saying, well, if it's working there, maybe it'll work for us to get the young voters out and, and those that are afraid to go out. Daryl Stranger, APTN National News, Winnipeg. 
To southern Alberta now, where there are no Indigenous candidates running for the federal election. So we asked grassroots, nonprofit organizations what their priorities are. As Tamara Pimentel reports, the priority for some is intergenerational healing. When APTN News met Shannon Little Light in summer of 2020, she was living in the first recovery home for Indigenous women in Calgary. It brings me hope. It, it makes me feel at peace with my life. Earl Thiessen of the Oxford House Foundation says there are now five of these homes in Alberta and about 60 people have lived in them. But as the federal election nears, Thiessen, who has struggled with addictions in the past himself, calls for more across the country. I don't believe a person can, can fully heal without the proper supports in place. Right, so coming down to housing, coming down to funding for cultural supports, focusing on, on recovery and Indigenous healing for me is, is priority. And it's also a priority for the Calgary Aboriginal Friendship Centre. Community outreach worker Krista White says issues like food insecurity are barriers for healing from intergenerational trauma, especially for the urban Indigenous population. Another, you know, contributing factor would be inadequate housing and overcrowdedness. I would say maybe half the popul indigenous population uh, live, you know, live off, off the reserve, you know, across Canada. And Marilyn North Pagan. She's the first Blackfoot woman to run for city councillor in Calgary. She's involved in many nonprofit organizations like the Friendship Centre. For her, healing starts with education. We need to start with the education piece with, with the you know non-Indigenous community right now. So that's going to help our, our people in the long run. She says the new federal government needs to look to municipalities. The federal government needs to start paying attention more to what's going on at a local level because you know right now we're getting frameworks that are not suited for our communities. So we need to listen to the communities in order to adjust these frameworks that, so they work for them. Thiessen says these recovery homes are the only kind in the country. There isn't a time limit for residents here. And while provincial funding has helped in Alberta, the organization needs the help of Ottawa to make it national. Our people need a lot of healing, especially with everything that's with, with the residential schools and the, the children being founded. It's crushing people, right? We were, we were feeling suffocated somewhat before now it's it's amplified. Tamara Pimentel, APTN National News, Calgary. Well, as we've been mentioning, our Melissa Ridgen is among the journalists at tonight's English language debate acting as moderate, moderator. And she'll be wearing a special jacket made by two Métis designers. More on that coming up after the break. Welcome back. Time now to take a look at our photo of the day. Following the herd on George Gordon First Nation in Saskatchewan, a great drone shot taken by Matt LeMay. Thank you, Matt, for sending in that great picture. If you want to be featured during our photo of the day, you can email your picture to share at aptn.ca, along with the location and description. Now let's take a look at Friday's weather forecast. Starting out on the East Coast, showers and 20 for Halifax, 21 with rain in St. John's. 16 with rain in Nain and Cartwright. 19 and cloudy for Montreal, 14 with showers in Chibugamu. Partly sunny in 22 for Sault Ste. Marie, 19 in North Bay. 23 in Thunder Bay, rain and 24 for Sioux Lookout. 20 with showers for God's Lake and Norway House. Rain and 26 in Winnipeg and Gimli, 27 and sunny in Brandon. Showers and 23 for Regina, 21 with rain in Saskatoon. 14 in Buffalo Narrows, 16 in La Ronge. In Northern Alberta, 16 for high level, 19 in Grand Prairie. 25 with showers in Medicine Hat, 21 in Edmonton. 22 in Vancouver, 21 for Victoria, 28 in Kamloops. 20 in Prince George, rain and 14 for Smithers. 15 in Old Crow, showers and 13 in Whitehorse. 11 in Yellowknife, 16 in Fort Liard. 
plus four in Saks Harbor, 10 in Politech, eight with rain in Chesterfield and Baker Lake, snow and minus three for Resolute, zero in Arctic Bay. Manitoba's Métis Heritage will be on display tonight in Gatineau. Our host, Melissa Ridgen, is sitting on the journalist panel for the federal English debate. Michelle Karlenzig has more on the Métis designs that Melissa will be sporting. Andriane Dondeneau launched her business, Anne Moulier, sewing in her parents' basement. Now the Métis Anishinaabe woman from Winnipeg will see her designs sharing a stage on national television next to political leaders. I definitely was 100% honoured because um, I think it's the perfect piece because it's so classic but yet the floral detail is, uh, you've never seen that before and it's so original so I think, um, yeah, I think it was a perfect uh, fit for, for her event. APTN's Melissa Ridgen will sit on the journalist panel for the federal debate and will sport the Moulier jacket. Dan Deneau is not the only Métis artist Ridgen will be wearing. She'll wear Jake Freeman's jewellery, another Métis artist from Winnipeg who makes beaded earrings. Freeman taught herself to bead on YouTube just three years ago. Since then, her designs have been featured on national stages like Governor General Mary Simon's swearing-in ceremony. I'm just really honoured that someone would reach out and specifically ask that I create something for them for, for a special event that they have. I think that's more meaningful, I guess, than, than you know, seeing it on TV. For the first time ever, a female Métis journalist will participate in the debate wearing two female Métis artist designs. Freeman says it's about more than just fashion supporting each other and and having that sense of community as well within uh, whichever nation you're in whichever indigenous nation I think is important to make those connections I think is is I think the real um, exciting part for me. Moulier says a lot has changed for Indigenous artists since those days inside her parents' basement. I've always had the spirit of my of my heritage in my collection, but I have to say it wasn't um, easy to sell 10 years ago, and I find it now there's lots of positivity, and um, I feel it's just, uh, it, you know, it, it feels good. And so I think as simple it is, I just, it feels really good to have another woman kind of represent um, us Indigenous women in, in Canada. Millier and Freeman say they will both be tuning in to the debate to watch their designs. Michelle Carlenzi, APTN National News, Winnipeg. Great looking designs and looking forward to seeing them on TV tonight. You can catch Melissa in the whole English debate right here at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. We'll also be live here ourselves starting at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time with the pre-debate show and back again at 11 p.m. Eastern Time for a post-debate show. Tonight's English debate is also available in Inuktitut, Plains Cree and Dene. For more on that, you can visit our website, aptnnews.ca slash debate 2020. I'm Dennis Ward. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back here in roughly two hours' time.